Good evening, Star Pupils. I'm your host, friend and life coach, Mrs. Divine, and I bridge the gap between intuition and intelligence by giving you the tools to discover alignment. In today's episode of Glitching Up the Matrix, I introduce to you my mentor, Hidesai. <laughs> I charter across unknown territory every time I decide to learn more about who I am and dive deeper inside. And when I do so, these so-called gurus on YouTube, they just don't cut it for me. Today, I leave you with an exclusive, exclusive interview with one of the most enlightened souls that I've come across. If you can understand the reasoning he brings and would like to hear more from him, then find him on YouTube and subscribe to his channel, Real Natural Heights. Heights is my mentor and he lives in Jamaica. He's a real simple guy with a real simple message. The breath, the breath, it's all just the breath. He has no formal education, but he's one of the most wisest people that I know. Just take a listen. You know, I was um, in this class and I was getting mentorship from someone else and it was interesting because the first class we did uh he was speaking about time and what time is and he was like he, he was describing it the way he was describing time i'm like that's spot on that's spot on and everything he was saying i was like agreeing to in my head you know like yep that's exactly what it is and then he was like does anyone know what time really is and I said, time is thought. And then he showed his next like little PowerPoint because he had a, a slide, a PowerPoint slide. And he was like, yes, time is thought. And it, I thought of you automatically because that's something that you and I concluded, you know, just in one of our reasonings. And so that was like our very first class together. And it showed me alignment and where I was at because it was like everything we had already come to know was just the beginning of what he had to show and so um the way that class went the way the class went is we worked through a lot of different things mind control being one of the biggest things i feel like i was there for because i know the level of programming that is put into the culture that that i live in you know i'm in america i'm in america and i'm completely submerged with a lot of things um i don't i don't have the 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 um island next to you know the island i don't have the a lot of the fresh fruits and stuff like that 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 grow um just readily <laughs> you know in jamaica like they do like they do there because it's not like that here um i'm not saying that one is better than the other but i'm saying that the stuff that I'm surrounded with living in America has a lot to do with um, what is used, tactics that are used to um, to trap the mind, to trap to trap us as um, conscious beings, and try to limit people from really reaching consciousness or their full potential. And um, that was, I, I believe, one of the biggest things I've taken from the class is seeing how that's done. Sorry, seeing how that's done on different levels. Um, for example, there is one we were talking about, and it's, I forget the name of it. Um, something normalizing, normalizing hypocrisy, okay? That's a form of mind control, normalizing hypocrisy. And that is when something is absolutely ridiculous, even if you think about it, but it's still something that becomes the norm, right? I'm surrounded by what's the norm, right? And so uh, one of the examples for normalizing hypocrisy could be the fact that, you know, uh, with everything going on right now, people are trying to uh, force others to take the jab, right? And they say that, Oh, it'll protect you, even though it that it'll protect someone from getting um, more serious side effects of the virus. Yet, it also gives them 
these same kind of symptoms that the virus will give them. And so it's, it's things that they're making. And on top of that, then they say you don't have to wear a mask if you got the jab, but they can still catch it even if they got the jab. So what's the point of not wearing a mask? Like if you think about the things that they're saying, it just doesn't make sense. But everybody's going with it, so it becomes normal. And then it trains people who aren't conscious enough to understand that that's when you learn to not follow the, the crowd. That's when you learn to not follow what is normal. And so I think that mind control aspect of it is the biggest thing I got from the class. And to really dive deeper into looking at myself. And one form of mind control that I uncovered that I was living under a program that I was living under was, and I I spoke about this in one of my videos too, but I, the revelation I had was after the video because it happened in the midst of the video. But, um, an idle mind is a devil's playground. That's the programming I was under and I didn't recognize I was under it for so long. And so if I'm trying to meditate and stuff, right, if I'm meditating and the point of my meditation is to still my mind, you know, to go into silence, to to have that void where it's no no thoughts coming through and just flow, just be at ease. I I would never have made it there if I didn't realize that I had this programming telling me to be afraid of going there because this is the space where the devil can operate. This is the space where once you start to get bored, once you start to have no thoughts, once you start to be in that state of nothingness or idleness or stillness, that this is the space to be afraid of. And I feel that on so many levels, right? Like even at home, if I'm if I'm getting bored on my day-to-day routine or something, I might do something completely ridiculous just because, oh, I was bored. And so when I'm when I'm approaching boredom or approaching uh, stillness just to that point where nothing is coming, where my mind is clear, that's really what it is. I'm approaching this point where my mind is clear uh, it's uncomfortable for me or it was uncomfortable for me because I had that programming of I'm getting to the point where I can be influenced negatively because I'm feeling that, that, that stillness. But what I've come to understand by realizing I have this programming there is, this, is that the polarity to it, right? So, um, the polarity is if an idle mind is a devil's playground, the opposite side of that is um, an idle mind is also the passageway to the divine mind. So with me under- having that understanding, I'm better able to reach those spaces in meditation where I really do have a calm mind and I can hear myself clearly. I've even gotten to the point now where I can, I've reached that level where I hear silence, where I hear silence, and within that silence, I discovered that what I'm hearing is still not silence, so then it goes silent again, and I hear something else, and the, basically there's layers of silence, and it, I, I started to hear my heartbeat, and then I went from hearing my heartbeat to hearing the blood flowing in my veins. And that, it, for lack of better words, it freaked me out. <laughs> but what I want to say really is that it opened up my mind to a certain level of awareness that even with things we think that there are that exist, there are levels to it. Like, we think we can find silence. How silent is silent? Yes, Mel. Yes. I'm so happy that we can reason again. Okay, I'm listening to your voice note, and I... Here you say, um, like fruits that you have where you is, is not authentic as the fruits here in Jamaica. Okay, that's true. But let me tell you this, Mel. Our thinking changes everything. It doesn't matter how worse the thing is. Once you think good about the thing, it spiritually becomes good because to be honest to be honest and a a lot of people wouldn't agree with me with this but it doesn't matter if them don't agree because i understand that they are not in a vibration like me to see certain things so they can agree now i come realize that 
nothing wrong with no food nothing wrong with no food because all food is the breath so it doesn't matter how human put all kind of things inside of the food for it to grow at least the bread still grow the food so if if the bread is so sensitive and knowledgeable so if a person in the u.s are going to grow the apple and they messed up the apple with all kind of fertilizer if nature which is the bread did have the, the fertilizer as something bad it wouldn't grow it wouldn't grow but nature does not matter what man use to grow it because anything human use to grow something is still a part of the bread they have to go inside of nature and get two three four five six different things from nature put together to create a chemical so everything that they get from nature which is the bread is still the bread so the chemical that they create to grow the apple is still the bread yeah so what we are going to do now is move that mindset now that they taught us that they taught us that um once things grow with fertilizer and all these things they are not good every food is good every single food is good nothing wrong with no food especially the food that we're supposed to eat eating meat that is totally wrong because you have to kill that animal or that bird or that to to eat it but like natural food that we're supposed to eat on a regular nothing wrong with the meal all we have to do is just change our mindset because the mindset that we are using to say these things are not good is the mindset that they taught us is the mindset that we have been taught from others whether school church um or a surrounding yeah it doesn't matter so it doesn't matter where you is Mel. this is what i want you to know it doesn't matter where you is it doesn't matter what you eat as long as you have a mindset to say okay this apple is the bread and when i eat it it's going to do me great wonders not great harm once you say that that means you're putting in you're sending a message to the bread to give you back that harm that you put in so if you can uplift your vibration of everything around you and just class them as wonderful being wonderful substance wonderful food wonderful fruit why you think most people pray over them food when before them eat because it carry a special uh, um spiritual prayer that even if something is in the food that not supposed to be in it that spiritual part of the bread just evaporate it away and make the food wholesome for your body so i am going to continue to listen to your voice silence i hear you ask Mel, how silence is silence life never silence the bread never silence if you just go into a, a zone find yourself into a zone where you may call it silent and if you listen good you still hear sounds you will still hear sounds so life never silence silence is when you don't talk but you're always going to hear sounds so life itself never silent you are the person who you you are the individual who do the silencing by just say okay let me close my mouth for some time and you don't physically talk that's where silence is but
But if you really go into a zone, even more time I am in the mountain and I am listening, I hear, I hear a sound. I hear a sound. So that's what I'm saying about silence. Yes, that's what I noticed too about silence is that you really don't find it. Because <laughs> like you said, once you think you found it, you realize you're hearing something. So it's another level to it. Um, I was listening to what you were talking about with the foods and everything. And that's absolutely true, right? That it's our thoughts that make it bad. It's, it, but actually everything is from nature. And, that's, and that is exactly why I said that um, the class was beneficial for me. Because you can tell me it's my thoughts that are making it bad. And I can understand or have an understanding of that, that yes, it's my thoughts that are making it bad, but I can't, it's hard. It's hard to begin to really believe in that and make that your reality. If you don't know how deeply embedded it is for you to tell yourself that's not true. Right. And so, um, education wasn't for me. I learned too much. I learned too much about, um, what made things good as far as like, you know, healthy foods, what made things unhealthy foods. Um, you learn about what they do to your foods, you know, all these things. When, when you know all these things are going on, then, and you don't, then it, then it makes it hard for you to realize that it's all in your head, right? That it's, that it, that's one way of thinking of it. It doesn't have to be your way of thinking of it. Um, yes, poison is poison, I guess, you know, this one thing could could or kills everybody who drinks it um but it could also be i mean you know so some things i feel like are are what they are you know even even in nature you can find a bush that is poisonous and it will kill everything that eats it um i mean is is that just your thought even if you did not know what this bush was about uh but what i had to do is i i know what i'm feeling is true right? Which is what you said that, you know, things become bad that we eat because we say that they're bad. But I have to uncover what in me is telling me that that's not true, even though I know that that's my understanding. And that's, that's where I was at with that was figuring out what was all inside of me that was making me hold on to these old beliefs that I knew better than to believe in. Yes, Mel. Yes, Mel. So true. So true. When over the years, when we learn about all these things, the way they taught us, for somebody to come now and tell you something different, it's it's so hard to 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 graph what that person is saying. You will you, you would have seen it and say yes, that sounds like true, but at the end of the day, you are going back to your reality that you have been taught. So. It really and truly take a, a, a person of a person who who focus more of what you want in life. Focus more about when you connect to the breath and you know about the breath. You don't know about all these things. There's a there's going to be changes of thought of all these things that we have been taught when you fully connect to the breath. Because there's a different vibration of truth that will flow in around your headspace now. So you can easily graph them or see them. It keeps flowing around from, from birth, coming up. But because we have been packed with so much outside teaching, we hardly can get to hear or even if we do hear some truth in the edit, we ignore it and say, oh, my mind, it's, my, it's just my mind. But it's, it's all to change our vibration of thinking. Yeah. So <clears throat> this is how you are going to free yourself. Free yourself to the point that nothing matters anymore. You just do what you want to do in a natural way of thinking that our thinking is what create everything in our in our um lifestyle our thinking whatever you think you bring it to reality 
Sometimes we think certain things, but we don't bring it to reality. And sometimes we think we bring it to reality. So everything that is around us is what people have been thinking. So we if, if, um, remember now, in school they don't taught us how to think. School teach us to hear and learn. So we hear and we learn and we pack those memories in our head. And those memories will be coming back to us as long as life is with us. Thinking is not what we get to do. So most people does not think and don't know how to think in the correct way. Thinking in the correct way, you really and truly have to friendly with the breath. That's how you are going to change your thinking. If you just friendly with the um, the teaching that we get on a daily basis and the people them that are around us that talk things and we, we, we graph it and take it on, then that's how we are going to stay. But once you get friendly with the breath, you are going to recognize difference. That's how I recognize the difference. And I come see that most teaching that we get is just to suit the rulers and leaders of this world. Nothing, nothing to do with the breath. Nothing. So you, 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 you're correctly right. Change it. You have a thought. We have a thought to use to get things in place, get where we want to go in life. Change it. If they're saying the time is too cold, you just say, wow, the time is nice. If they're saying the sun is too hot, you just say, wow, the sun is so joyful. So by doing this, you're sending wonderful signal to the breath. I love you touch that point that in nature, you will find the herbs that is poisonous. And really and truly, it is not poisonous. It is not poisonous. It is just that time people use it when it's not the time for it to use. So that enzyme that is in it does not evaporate out for it to become alkaline. So people use it at that time, but it is not really poisonous, just like a aki. If you use a aki by opening it yourself and use it, you are going to poison, but that don't mean aki poison. No, you have to wait until it reach the open stage. If you eat a young, pick a young mango from the tree and eat it, that, that acid or that enzyme, I wouldn't say enzyme, acid, that natural chemical, and you bite it, it's going to burn up your mouth. But that don't mean the mango bad. It's just we have to wait until the time. So there's nothing in nature that is poisonous. Everything just have the, the time for us to utilize it. And sometimes we do it before. So we get caught. Yeah. I agree with you 100% about the timing that we use things is when it's poisonous. I never thought about that. Um, because once again, it's about what we learn, right? And what we see... Um, we tend to believe as well. So that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. And it's something I want to look into more. Um, another thing that we discussed, well, so this person, he, he was big on basically decoding the Bible, right? So, um, it was like a theme in the class that most of us who were there, were highly religious at one time, like a lot of us are, and are breaking away from religion, right? So um, his thing is he likes to decode the Bible and use it metaphysically. And he was reading off of a scripture. Um, I really don't know the Bible 100% to give you um, like what verse and what book and all that it came from. But he was talking about when Judas betrayed Jesus, and um, Jesus basically died and then was able to rise again without his body. And so he was saying things like Judas represents um, the sensations of the body. 
and he was saying that in order for us to rise to a higher level of consciousness to the state we um you know to get through the mist we have to be able to do it in by letting go of the temptations of the body he says here in the physical realm the body tends to try to rule because you pick up everything that comes of life you you understand life through your senses through how you interpret things through your senses and the body can mislead us can mislead uh, what's like who we are actually inside because in order for us to uh, ascend higher we have to be able to go against basically any cravings that the body has or senses the body wants to experience that is not balanced. For example, if we need to eat, um, we should know we need to eat, not just be eating because it tastes good, Um, not just be doing something because it feels good, even though it's causing harm to our body and not allowing us to ascend. So um, I think that was a big thing, too, that stood out for me, because I know when you and I spoke, we spoke about how the body is really at our mercy, right? The body, the body does whatever, what is, is going to deal with whatever it is that we do with the body. And then I see it as like twofold now that yes, the body does what we do with the body or it's at our, it's at its, the body's at our mercy. The body is at the mercy of us, right? Um, because what we do could aid the body and help it to restore and rejuvenate, regenerate, and it can also destroy the body. But also the same thing goes when our senses are, I guess, overstimulated or unbalanced, and now we're craving all these things because our body wants it, um, then it could be like a double-edged sword and be causing us harm as well. So the balance between the mind, body, and soul um, is key. And many of us are dealing with the fact that our bodies have started to rule here on this plane. And we are uh, not rising to higher levels of consciousness because we are focusing on the cravings of the body. By the way, I really appreciate how you really listen to me. You really feel me out and listen to my words and uh, meet me at a level of understanding to see where there is understanding and where there is um, like a gap you know, a knowledge gap, uh, a knowing gap. I appreciate that from you. Yes, Mel. I have to really butt in on this one because I'm listening to your first voice note. And you're saying that somebody say the body, it is as if the body um, rob us from whatever. And I am telling you that the body does not talk to us. Our thought talk to the body. The body cannot talk to the thought. The thought talk to the body. And the body do what the thought said. Yeah, because any movements the body make, it have to be in the thought first. The body, the body is line to the thought the body does not react itself to tell you say okay move this foot and put there no the body take answers from what you think and tell the body to do the body cannot be blamed everything is really between your thought and your thinking. Thought is what travels through your brains secondly, minutely, hourly, daily, yearly because it's a reaction 
of our physical doings over the year create back that thought so it keep coming back at us at all times and we always listen to our thoughts sometimes we listen consciously sometimes we listen unconsciously and then we make the body do what we hear the thought keep running it's like listening to a song so from the starting of the song to the ending of the song you keep listening every word that the song said so thought is what no one can stop no one can stop the thought but you can stop from don't do what the thoughts say to do and that's when you're in a conscious stage to understand that these thoughts always flowing around in our head it keeps flowing around because is we first put in these thoughts in our head and they come back at us and keep flowing around and we hear them we hear them and we seize them and we react to some of them and some of them we don't so person said woman does not create anything that person may be right but it's because if woman don't create anything is because they fail to create because all of us are one breath and we all are in the physical form to create so if woman does not create is because they fail to create because we all have thoughts we all have a capacity to think it's not like man alone think and woman don't think that is the only way a woman cannot create if she don't have a, a, a thinking capacity and we all do have it but as far as how i see it most likely women fail to create but they can create women can create and i am going to i kind of like this one i am going to go forward in my meditation about this to see if there's anything that woman create naturally create so women as givers um receivers <laughs> that's that's to me that's in the physical world because we are oh, we are both the same equal people in the spiritual realm so i always view things from the spiritual realms because i already connect and know about the physical so when i match the physical with the spiritual to see if i can get something different then that's what i do so woman is a receiver in the physical because that's only what we see women do keep receiving keep receiving but no women women still do what they have to do yeah and all of us are receiver in all aspect both men women we are all receiver yeah so because the people are not getting straight to the point of life we all come from the breath but maybe he does not know it that way so he's saying it in the way how he has been taught we all come from the most higher so you don't want to call a name you know if you say we come from god or we come from buddha or we come from allah or we come he said the most higher so we all come from the most higher it's really a disguise name not to know where we come from and who we come from but when you go when you when you know where you come from and you know that is the breath then that's the real true point of life the breath nothing else that you can say we come from away from the breath and if he is if he is viewing the most eye as the breath then him around listen to this again mel if that person is viewing the most eye as the breath of life then him go wrong but if, if if that person are viewing the most eye as an individual as an image that i made we him see the most eye as a man 
in his head, then that's where he's totally wrong. Hi. Hey, Heights, I wanted to ask you if you know about any universal laws and what your thoughts are on them. Hi, Mel. Yeah. I hear your ox with asking me if I know about any universal laws. Yes, I do. Because the law, the rules, I want to listen to me very keenly on this. Because the laws of the breath, it's really not a law, but that's how the breath function. And nothing can change the breath from function in the way how it's functioning. So, to us, we would say, yeah, sorry about that. To us, we would say it's a law. But to the breath, it isn't a law. It is just a vibration that it flow with to create what it wants to create. And nothing can stop that. Okay, take for instance, the breath is here. Countless of years. And if I want to make it a little more easier for you, I would still use a number by say the breath is here. Zillions, zillions of years before anything form it into the physical aspect of the breath. So it was just the breath within that spiritual realms keep vibrating vibrating and vibrating with with its natural rules and laws just use the word rules and laws for you to to understand what i'm saying so when the breath started to create its physical creation from itself because when it created the earth, the earth is still the breath, but it all it do is just form the breath into a physical matter. Yeah, physical matter that we can access, see, look at, and touch. That that, that vibration that it flow with, what we would call rules. That's what it of to just deal with all of its creation. In, in its in, in a feet way okay so when human being um, farm it on earth now the breath already have a rules and laws within it zillions of years that nothing can change it and nothing can add to it for the breath to change so Anything a person do, the breath only do what it has to do to make the thing work because the breath is really a vibration that keep growing, keep living, keep carrying on things from zillions of years before human come in. So when human being come now and start to create, they create, they are, we are creating things already in the motion of the breath that ready to that ready to grow things yeah so the breath really does not have a rules and a laws um i hope you could really understand what i'm really saying because i kind of a little complicated being as me using rules and laws i'm yet still i'm still telling that it doesn't have a rules and a laws but to we human we would call it a rule and a law. To the breath, it isn't any rules nor laws. It is just a vibration that it flow with zillions of years before human come on earth. And human being on earth, it's just a tiny, tiny little matters that is in the vast 
vibrational substance of the breath. So, if, if you could just visualize the earth, if you could just visualize the earth as a mustard seed, if you know what a mustard seed is, very small, it's supposed to be the smallest seed that exists, a mustard seed. So, if you could just view the breath as a, view the earth as a small particles, and then now view human being around the earth and upon the earth, you will see that the earth is very, very small. So the little portion of human being where each of you know, one tiny little corner of the breath could never tell the breath what to do unless it's something that the breath always have in its vibration from long time. Just like how the first man and the first woman, they did connect fully to the breath so they could think about anything and it appeared to them. They could think that they want to go to the moon and them just look and see themselves at the moon because why? That's the rules and laws of the breath. The rules and laws of the breath is for us to think what we want and then the breath put it in place. So we have to think and think clearly so the breath can recognize what we are thinking and it put it into place and that is that is before human being exists so that is the rules are the laws that i know the breath of nothing else nothing else and i can tell you that the breath does not have anything else anything you hear man i say our man really create within their own space of their head yeah that reasoning is spot on and it clears up for me I guess what I wasn't sitting comfortably with, which was when they say that exactly, you know, the, the, the word laws, right? The universal laws. I always had this feeling, right? Like if the breath is all there is and beyond whatever we can, you know, conceptualize, then the laws don't apply to it, right? So if that's what we are, it, like the word laws was tripping me up. Right? And you said it right that we're saying laws because we're humans, and that's the way for us to understand it, but it's the way that the breath functions. That is so clear. You did a great job explaining that to me because I know that the quote unquote law, universal laws, I know how to apply them, and I'm consciously working, I'm consciously applying them for. Um, the way I live as, as something that I keep in mind, the same way I keep in mind, um, I guess, how to make a bed, right? Like have it that readily available in my mind where it's, it's something I know like within, but I wasn't sitting right with that word right there, the universal laws. So you're right. That's how the breath functions and thinking about it that way clears it all up for me. I feel like the more I consciously use quote unquote universal laws, um, the more in tune and connected I am with the breath. Because it's as if I'm speaking its language, for lack of better words. Okay, I got the question. The question is how do our eyes work? And in particular, can you explain why, although we have two eyes, if we cover up one, our vision remains the same. And we see things as if we are looking through one eye instead of two separate eyes. I hope that's clear. Yes, Mel, that's very much clear. Before I ask you to give it to me a little more clearer, I figure I did the same answer that I'm going to give you now. That's the same answer that I did have before, but I did just want it a little more clearer to get the fullness of what you are saying. Now, first of all, in real true life of the breath, each and every one only have one eye, one single eye. These two at the front, 
it's not really high. Can no one have three high? It's one high. These two are just to look and the physical things in front of us. So whenever you use these, I would call them look, because that's what they do. They, they, their job is to look. So these two look, look at things in front of us and send that signal that we look at to the eye. So you, you the look, look at the physical things, send the signal to the eye. That's what they call the pineal glands or the inner eye. So it sends a signal to the eye, which is only one eye, and it's, that's the eye. What the eye do is snap the signal, which is the pictures of whatever you look at, whatever we look at. It snap the picture and send it to the subconscious side of your brains. That's where it store as memory. So at times you can, it, what at times the breath, give it back to you so you see it through the eye. And you can remember what you did look at. So take for instance, you look at your car. As quick as you look at the car, it send a signal to the eye which is the shape of the car and they take the picture and keep it. So whenever time you are not around your car, you still can know what color your car is and how the shape of your car and whatever. Because you are seeing it through the eye. These that we use for the physical world, it does not see anything is the eye you use to see and we use these to look so the two in front of us look and the eye see the eye don't look the eye see and create back that image and send it to you just like if you close it you two of them the two of them all right i'm going to use the word eye being as at that you know say you close your two eye you are still seeing. You are seeing. When you open them, you are looking. So you would use the term, oh, I'm looking at my car. Right. But the next day you would tell somebody said, you know something, yesterday I see or saw my car. So in that way you now you are utilizing up the inner eye to use the word saw or see yeah so that's how i see it work so as i'm saying you must always remember or i want you to source it for yourself some other way i don't know if you can hear anybody else with this by saying that it's only one eye each and every one of one eye and two look so whatever you look at it, it, it's just look you look but remember the eye sees right around the, these only look in front of you and glimpse sideways but the higher that is in our brains it see at a tree 60 degrees right around you don't have to look around to see what you want to see so if you close them you close the two look the eye are seen everywhere at the same time yeah so that's the eye mel these are just look but as me say we get these teaching so we work with them so by saying that we have two eyes it kind of 
not let us know that we have an inner eye because many people does not know that they have an inner eye but yet still we all use it up every single day and we don't enough people don't know that they have an inner eye they only say they have two eyes but they don't realize that the eye that they have them don't mention it because they don't get the teaching of it right so thank you respect mel and thank you so much for connecting forward with me and to so far i love the reasoning and i love how you you you, you listen to what i'm saying with an open mind not necessarily that you are going to agree with everything but i understand that you are very understandable woman are understandable woman yeah so give thanks give great thanks yeah remember to give this video a thumbs up